All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. Um, I'm super excited about this podcast and, and excited to talk about some of the gear that um, I've been using this uh, this hunting season. Something that I've I've really started to to really love, and I know that you guys, as we dig into this a little bit, are going to uh, love it as well. And then you may have heard about this stuff before, and you, if you guys have already clicked on this, you've already seen that the title on it, which is Driver Gear. Um, I've got Evan here with Driver. So Evan, how you doing, man? I'm good. Hey, thanks for having me. Dude, it's, uh, absolutely. I'm glad we finally got a chance to uh, to do this. This is something I've really been looking forward to for a long time. I've been using your gear for the last, well, couple of months and uh, been been loving it. So excited to uh, to talk about it and, and just talk things, all things Striver. So uh, I want to kind of yeah. kick this off. I, maybe people know you, maybe people don't, but if, if you don't mind, you know, tell us a little bit about you, where you're at, what you do and, and all those fun things. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I'm out of Montana. Um, you know, I just launched the company back here in January of this year. Mm -hmm. So we're brand new to the market, just getting out there. Um, probably most people aren't going to have heard of me yet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, this has been something though, that I have been working on for three years now. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a long process and the whole reason I ended up even doing it in the first place was I wanted a way to remove my pouch from the harness. Um, it, it just, there were so many times out in the field where I sit down the glass and I take my whole bino harness off, set it right next to me. Cause I'm sitting there for hours yep. or I'm just getting out of the truck to open a gate or something. And then I throw it back on and off getting in and out of vehicle. So it was constantly doing it. And finally I was like, you know what, there's gotta be a better way for that. Mm-hmm. And when I first set out, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to make one for myself <laughs> just to see how it goes and like, see what it looks like and everything. So there was nothing out there. Right. Um, so I just, I tried digging into it myself and everything, tried to make it, but I quickly found out I couldn't do it. Um, <laughs> so that's when I started going a little farther and kind of started realizing that, you know, this was something that other people are going to like too, um, because it's not out there. And so I said, okay, maybe I can make something out of this. And, you know, I dug in with engineers and um, went, got multiple factories and really started grinding on getting everything going. And after uh, a long time of designing and testing all this stuff and getting it just right, you know, got it to where it is now. And that's kind of how it all came to be. So dude, that's daunting, isn't it? Like the thought, like I've, I've had ideas oh, of yeah. stuff, like I want to do something, but then like, how do you even go about like talking to an engineer and, right. and work it? Like <laughs> that scares the sh- crap out of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was something too, where when I first started, you know, I have no experience in any of this stuff. Right. So for me, it was completely out of the blue. Like I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so it was just figuring it out as I go. And it's been, it's been pretty cool figuring it all out and just literally learning every little step along the way. What, like what's your day job? What do you do? For, like, I mean, does this, is this all you're doing right now as driver? Or do you have a, do you have another job that you're doing or what do you do? No. So I was a, I was a plumber for a while okay. um, doing that. And then I just switched roles uh, fairly recently, um, mm-hmm. trying to get myself a little bit more experience, I guess, that's going to help me out in this future for this job now. Um, so not right now, I'm an operations manager at a warehouse where we okay. do shipping and receiving. Okay. Um, so gotcha. it kind of helps translate a little bit into the business side of stuff. I'll say, um, yeah, the, the shipping so yeah. side of it and the, distri- the distribution side of it probably yeah. is, is super yeah. helpful. I, I was just wondering because like... I, like you were talking about going into engineers and stuff like that. Like I, things I've thought about, I'm like, like it would be beneficial if I even knew like where to begin with. Like, you know, people come out with, oh, yeah. you know, like we'll, we'll talk about bino harnesses, but like when people come out with a bino harness, I'm like, oh, freak, why didn't I even think about that? You know, like stuff that you guys are putting in these things. I'm like, I don't even, I'm, I, I love it, but like you guys got to be like a different level of intelligence than I have. Like that's got, that's gotta be what it comes down to. <laughs> it's, I mean, I think it's in everybody out there. It's just a matter of, you know, going out there and figuring out how to do it. I mean, I didn't do anything crazy. Um, like, I, I don't have a background in any of this. All I did was just, I know what I want. And I just went out there and tried to make it. And I think the hardest part is doing the research to figure out then like finding engineers. That was like really difficult engineers mm-hmm. that you can work with. And then, you know, even when you find them though, then you got to kind of commit. You got to say, okay, I'm going to spend the money on them. And cause it's not cheap. Starting yeah. all this. So <laughs> doing all that, you know, taking a leap of faith kind of, and just running with it and then learning along the way. And basically all I did for the entire harness from start to finish pretty much. And I got a little advice along the way, but 
for the most part, I just created what I wanted. Mm. Um, and so it's literally just every little piece to be like, okay, I don't want it that way. And mm. I change it. And so just getting it to where I think it was the best I could make it. Was it just you or is it just, is it just you, Evan, or is, do you have anybody else helping you in this process? It, it's pretty much just me. I've got family members Dang. that help me out every now and then, but wow. from, from literally everything, I've pretty much just done it all. Um, I mean, as far as even creating my own website, running wow. all the advertising, everything I, I've gone and done all of it. So Dude. you got to learn a lot along the way, but it's fun. Well, and it's cool. Cause like you can tell that you like went all in on this. Like you didn't come out with oh, it. Like, yeah. it's not like this is a cheap product. You're like, like I'm, right. for those listening to the podcast, I've got it right here. If you're watching on the video, you'll see it. But like, this is like good material. It's not like it, it's not like you half-assed it, you know, like it, this is like really oh, yeah. good stuff. Like you can tell that it, it costs a lot of money to, to go into this and put into it. Like you just, yeah, you, you really went all out on it, which is, it's really awesome. Oh yeah. I mean, I think the hardest part when I first started everything was figuring out sort of the design of doing the quick release. That mm -hmm. was figuring out how it's actually going to function. Like it has to function correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was kind of a long process of figuring out. I, I couldn't even tell you how many different designs I tried and tested, but um, you know, that was step one, figuring out a way to actually release it from mm -hmm. the harness. And then step two was, you know, diving into those materials um, mm -hmm. because yeah, like, didn't want to cheap out on cheap stuff. I wanted to make sure it was high quality. It's going to hold up for years. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really tough and rugged for out and hunting. Um, Cause when you're out hunting, you know, you're Dude. tossing those things around. You don't care about it. Like you're just going to throw it around and I, you're trying to protect thousand dollar optics or more. So. Right. I about sent you a picture because so <laughs> I, and this was all legal by the way, what I was doing, but I had to crawl underneath a fence and I had this on the, on the front of me. But there was some there were some deer that I was I was going after and I was like I could unclip it set it off to the side because it's really quick to, and easy to do that or I could just drag this thing through the dirt and and just <laughs> do it and if I mean if I wasn't chasing the deer if I would have had time to like really take a picture and send it to you I would have done it but like literally I'm dragging this thing through, <laughs> through the dirt as I'm crawling underneath oh, yeah. this fence and I mean it's yeah it, it's really good material and I, and I, I want to get into the quick release locks um, here in just a minute because I, I do think that like that's a I want to know the background on that, how you came up with that. And I'm sure there's a background story, but actually even before we come up with that or go to that, like, where did the name come from? Where did this, uh, this name come from? So the name itself, I think took me the longest time to figure out <laughs> over the actual product. Nice. It was like, okay, I got a product. I, I can figure out a company. I can do everything else. But then it's like, oh shoot, I got to name it. So <laughs> that, that uh, actually took quite a while and I would say literally the whole three years I started thinking about a name and just never came up with anything until right at the end. Wow. Um, so it was just, where did it come from? What, what, it, of, what is oh, it? it? It's just, it's just the idea of I'm always striving to be better. And mm. I want everybody that's using this stuff to strive to be better for themselves too. And we uh. want to have gear that's going to allow you to strive to be better. And it's not going to hold you back. Like your gear should never hold you back. So that's, that's kind cool. of where that hole came from. That's cool. I mean, I, I, I love it. I, I think that's, that is cool. And, and you guys are definitely striving to do something different that nobody else has, has done. And, um, and I talk about this. So, so for those listening to the podcast, like I've, I've got a video coming out where I, you know, cause I've had a lot of different vinyl harnesses in the, in the past. Um, lately my Kuyu one's been my, my go to the, the pro vino harness. Um, but then I found this and, and Evan was awesome enough to hook me up with this. And, uh, it's, it really is a, a game changer, but you guys will see in that video kind of some of the things that I, I love about this versus other ones that I've used in, in the past. Um, but so it is, it's striving to be a lot better than, than anything else that that's out there. So that's cool. I love the logo by the way, too. I don't know if there's any significance to that, but I, I you have a cool logo too. Say so just kind of, I wanted mountains in it and I wanted like some kind of a river sort of thing. I just started throwing stuff together and that's kind of what I came up with. So uh, nice. It is the hardest yeah. thing, dude, coming up with a, a name. And I mean, I have the worst name yeah. out there. E Hunter is like the, well, so like E Hunter is electronic hunt resource. And so that's why we shorted it down to E Hunt or E Hunter. Okay. Um, it's the stupidest name 
in the world, but you get so far down the road and you can't change it. You know, you gotta, you gotta yeah. stick with it. And and now people know what e-hunter is. And so it's like, yeah, you're, I'm freaking stuck with it, <laughs> but yeah, exactly. It, it is what it is. I mean, Strivers, it, it is a cool, really cool name. So, um, so for those that are watching on the, on the podcast on, on YouTube, I'll, I'll hold it up here so you guys can kind of see what, what this is about. But so, I mean, vinyl harness and then, it, and the cool thing about this is it's got a phone holder or a range finder holder but um, super comfortable, and I talk about this in the video as, as well, but super comfortable to just wear. I sweat like a pig, Evan, when I'm, I'm hiking and, and whatnot, so it's probably a good thing you can't smell this thing through the, uh, through the camera, but um, <laughs> it does. It breathes really well. I, I felt like it did, it did great, um, and we can talk more about the details of this, but the, the biggest thing, the biggest thing that stood out to me when I first saw this was the quick release that this thing does. And, and I'm not going to do it here on the podcast. You guys will have to go watch the video to, to see all the details of that. But we're going to talk through this mainly for podcasting purposes of this this quick release. So so the system basically releases and, and pops off. I don't know if you can see it, Evan, as well. But pops off there, and, and that way you can pull the bino harness off of – well, pull the – Evan, why am I doing the one uh, doing the one it, talking? You, you explain everybody it. says it that way, so don't even worry about it. It's, <laughs> it's pulling the pouches off of the harness. That's, the harness stays there we on go. you. There we go. The pouches come off. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, everybody always says it that way because you've never heard it that way before. Right. So it's always just been a binder harness. It's never been a harness and pouches. So well, and, and even I call it a binder harness. So it's the whole thing as a whole is a binder harness, but. When you have to explain that, it's kind of a little tricky at first. Yeah, I'll bet. I, and you know, now I'm thinking about it in that video. I'm going to have to go back and see how I said it in that video. I bet I messed that up about 50 times. So when you see that video, don't don't judge me too bad, Evan, when you when you see oh, it. Yeah. So, so yeah, the harness stays in place. The pouches um, come off. But it, it's a very simple system. So, Evan, if you want to mind, do your best to, at explaining how this system works, especially for those that aren't able to see it but are just listening in. Yeah, so... On the pouches and the harness, there's four magnetic buckles, two on the top and two on the side. And those are the places where the pouches connect to the harness. Um, so they're staying locked in place. And then on each magnetic buckle, there's a little pull tab and you have to pull those in the correct direction. Otherwise they stay locked in place and they will not release. I mean, they hold up under pretty tremendous force. I mean, they're very strong. Um, so once you pull them in the right direction though, they literally just, it comes straight away, very fast and easy. And then when you're ready to put it back on, all you have to do is line up the buckles. You just get them close and they find their home. They're very, very easy to use and super heavy duty. So did you develop this system or have, have you seen this kind of locking system before? Or is this just something that you and your engineers and developers came up with? Um, and no, so this is a company that's already out there uh, called Fidlock. Okay. And they have a pretty wide variety of magnetic buckles already, actually. Oh, okay. I went through, so when I first started with the design, it wasn't even looking at magnetic buckles at first. Um, but then I kind of started looking into that and thinking, oh, it's going to be way faster. It's going to be way easier to use. And I'm, I mean, I went through a ton of different buckles, but the reason this buckle really works extremely well is because the female end that's connected to the harness is actually sewn on. So it's sewn all the way around. So there's mm -hmm. zero movement from it when you take it off and it's not going to be getting in your way. Um, and it just makes it so when you go to put the male ends from the pouches on, they just find their home super easy and they line up every time, you know, right where they're going to be at. So it's easy to use that way. If it wasn't for finding these buckles, that was what took me the longest probably was finding the buckles themselves. Mm -hmm. But once I found that, it, it was like, instantly it made sense yeah everything just went together perfectly man and it really is that's one thing i really liked about this is like because you know sometimes you're in a hurry take you know putting it on like if you're going to go chase after a deer or whatever like and you don't want to yeah. throw it on really quick and i demonstrate this in the video but it's like i mean it takes all of seconds to snap like because yeah. the, the kudos to you doing the magnet part of it because those magnets just they find themselves where they need to go and it i mean it snapped on in just a few seconds so and, and it comes off just as, yeah. as quick you know if you i did i did right. feel like the first few times i was using it and trying to pull it off like you do have to pull in the right direction if you're trying to pull in the wrong direction yeah. it's not gonna work which is a good thing that way if you get it caught on something yeah. you know like the stars exactly. have to perfectly yeah. align for it to be pulled perfectly so that it popped off of like from a tree or a scrub oak or something like that. But yeah, once I figured out the way to right. pull it, man, thing came off in a hurry. 
Yeah, exactly. And that was the thing with those buckles too, is that there was other magnetic buckles out there Mm -hmm. and they will come off if they're just pulled just a little bit. And you're not going to want that then because like you said, you get snagged on a tree or your belly crawling like Mm -hmm. you were. (laughs) It's just going to come right off. So yeah, you have to have it to where it really locks in place perfectly. And then once you really figure out, yeah, I mean, I've done it a few thousand times now, so it's (laughs) easy for me, but, and I can do it blindfolded, but Mm -hmm. once you practice it, I mean, you just grab them and it's, it's so easy to pull them off, but you do got to figure it out. Yeah. I'd say the biggest thing is when you're pulling the uh, pull tabs is the side ones. You just want to pull back towards your armpit Mm -hmm. and then they release. You always do the sides first. And then you grab the top ones and you literally lift the whole pouch straight up. And I didn't, um, I didn't know that until I putting it on. Yeah. I watched a video that you did that show doing the, the bottoms first and then the tops. Cause I kept doing the tops first and then kind of flop. And it was, it was yeah. awkward to do the, the bottom ones. And then I saw a video that you posted on, on Instagram and I was like, Oh freak, that makes it. And so I tried that. And I was like, Oh, so much, you know, so much easier. So it's not like this is rocket right, science yeah. either, by the way, for those that are listening, I mean, it's, it's really easy to use. This is a very user-friendly product that, that it's not going to take you. You don't have to practice this or anything like that. You, you learn which way to go, and then you've got it just in, in no time. So it, it really is a, an amazing product. And that's really, I mean, the, the key behind this. And, and like you said, Evan, it's really nice being able, like when you're jumping in the truck and you just want to take it off there for a minute. Um, in fact, <laughs> I, I kind of got made fun of because I was, not make fun of, but we were, uh, we were just road hunting and, and we came back into town and, and grabbed lunch. And I just popped it off and set it there in my, on the console of my truck. And I still had my harness yeah. on. We walk into the restaurant and had some guys kind of giving me a funny look at like, this dude's wearing a bra or what's, what's going on <laughs> yeah, over there. Right? <laughs> and, uh, in fact, one of the guys came and talked to me. He's like, what, what are you, what is that? Like, what are you, what are you doing? And then, so then I ended up taking him out to my truck and showed him like how it worked. Oh, awesome. And, um, there were just a bunch of guys in, in side by sides. And so, yeah, I showed them all how it worked. And so ho- ho- I told them, I, was, I gave them your information as far as where to find you showed them your, uh, your Instagram and stuff like that while we were sitting there. So hopefully they, they go on and, and purchase some as well. But yeah, everybody that's seen it, they're like, man, that's such a genius idea just to be able to take it off when you want to take it off and throw it on really quick when you want to throw it on. Cause it really does suck when you have to like try and unbuckle it, yeah. pull it over your head. You know, it, 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 it's a pain to try and do that. And your, yeah. your process is very easy. Oh yeah. I mean, especially like once we start getting the later season now, mm-hmm. I think everybody's really going to start seeing more advantages. Cause when you have multiple layers on, you've got a big coat, it's way harder to get your harness on and off. So that's where it really starts to shine is when you've got your coat on and you're pretty much leaving it on all day. Mm-hmm. I mean, getting a harness on without that, it's, it's just a pain. So yeah. sticking it on there real fast is just a real convenient feature. It is. It is it's so convenient. I loved it. Um, and, and everything else on it, you know, like I said, the rangefinder holder, good magnet hold there. I mean, and, and elasticity there. So it opens up, you can have your, your rangefinder there available to you. The phone holder, I was going to, I don't know if I told you this yet, but I, I talked about this in the video, but I was on my side by side for the majority of my archery hunt where it's super dusty and none of like, none of my glass got dust on them. They kept, this kept them really nice and clean, but especially my phone, I'd put in here to zip it up and it, it kept it perfectly clean. I didn't get any yeah. dust on my, on my phone. So honestly, oh, perfect, amazing, amazing setup. Um, I, I, I did, I told you my one concern about it. I'd love to kind of chat with you a little bit about that is so in here, I've got my, my vortex razors. These are the 10 by 42s. Um, I've got the UHD 10 by fifties and, and they don't quite fit in here. So talk to me talk, and tell my people, my listeners a little bit about like, um, you know, size options and maybe future stuff that's going to come out with your, your harness system. Yeah. Yeah, so right now it's mainly going to fit your 10 by 42s. It's the one pouch size. Now, if you remove the rain cover that's in the bottom of that pouch, you can unclip the little buckle, take the rain cover out completely. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, you actually gain about a half inch to a three quarter inch in height. So you can fit a little bit taller by nose. Mm-hmm. Like I run uh, 10 by 50s in there and they fit. Um, they're kind of a standard 10 by 50. Those UHDs are way taller. Yeah. Um, so don't quite fit in there. Um, but that's something we're working on right now. Um, or I am, I guess I'm working on three new pouch sizes. So we're going to have a small, medium and a large coming out in the future here. Um, so you'll be able to fit the entire lineup of optics based off what you want. And then we're also going to make it available too, to where you'll have, you, you can buy just the pouch. So say you have a set of, you know, eight by 42s that you're uh-huh. running. Well, you can put those in your small pouch. 
and then say you have a pair of those UHD with 10 by 50s like that. Yeah. Well, you can leave those in the large pouch. And then when you want, all you have to do is swap it from on the harness. It all works in the same system. Exactly oh, the man. same. So That's a really good it's, idea. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, you wouldn't have to buy a whole new harness. Just buy the pouch. Just the pouch, yep. And then you can you know set it up each way how you want. Maybe you don't need on the larger pouch. You don't need the range finder or you don't need the yeah. foam pouch. You can leave that just on the small one and then set that up. You can set each one up that way and then you just have the one harness. So maybe one of them lives in your truck. Yeah. Like a lot of guys that I know, myself included, there's always a pair of binos sitting in the truck. Mm -hmm. So now you can just throw a pouch in there, um, leave your binos protected rather than sitting out. Yeah. And then if you ever want to grab it and go, you can just pop it on the harness real quick and you're good to take off. Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, you know, when I'm usually when I'm in the truck or where I'm, you know, or in a side by side, I've actually got my bigger binos there because I'll stop and throw them on a tripod and, and glass. But then when I go to chase the deer, I usually take a smaller set of binos, um, which that's what yeah. these ones were originally intended for was that purpose. I ended up just using them all, all hunt long for the most part um, so I could keep them in here. But that'd be nice because then I could have my big ones there while I'm kind of, you know, in the truck or, you know, yeah. glassing um or hiking to go glass you know hike up on a knoll or whatever use those but then if i'm gonna go chase an animal throw this you know throw this pouch on with my smaller bino so it's lightweight lighter weight man that's a really yeah. really good idea yeah just quick and easy to swap it out just like that just like you said i mean you might be sitting at camp or something mm -hmm. or you're driving around and you have those bigger ones right on you and it's convenient to have them right there on your chest so yeah. you can run it like that and then when you're ready to go make a stock swap it out that's a that's a great idea. So, awesome. Yeah, as soon as you come out with that bigger one, I'm gonna have to get that for you from you just for that that reason. I've loved this yeah, thing, Evan. Sure. I, I really have. Uh, maybe share with my listeners a little bit about like accessories. Obviously, we've talked about the rangefinder, uh, the phone holder. Is there any other accessories that they can get for these? Right now, that's it. Um, okay. We do have some new side release buckles. Um, one complaint we've had from a couple of people now, actually, is the buckles that are currently on there. Mm -hmm. um, when you're wearing it tight around your chest, and depending on how you wear your harness, I've seen guys run it from really, really tight to they wear it down on their stomach really loose. Mm -hmm. um, so depending on how you wear it, it can dig into your ribs a little bit, especially when you put a backpack over it and the straps oh, are going see that. right over yeah. the top of that. Um and so we have a new G hook style buckle. And in what you do is you actually take the buckle that's off of the pouch existing uh -huh. or the harness and you're able to swap it over. So there's just a little loop that the female buckle is actually held to. Gotcha. Um, so you're able to pop that off and then you can just hook it on and it's extremely sleek. Uh -huh. It's just, it's not as secure. Yeah. Um, so obviously if you run it looser, it's something you probably wouldn't want to do, but if it's a comfort thing and you wear it tight to your chest, the new G hook style buckle has been a game changer for a lot of people, That's um, especially because once you put the harness on too, you're typically not taking it off for the rest of the day. Right. Um, maybe once or twice. So it's not too big of a deal. That's the nice thing is you so, put that harness on and, and really just leave that harness on. I'll be honest, man. I, I ran it. I run it really tight because I, you know, I, sometimes I'm running and gunning, literally running. And, and so I like yeah. it to be nice and, and tight. I didn't I didn't have those things dig into me at all, or at least I didn't notice them digging into me at all yeah. and so I, I i didn't have that issue but I, I could see it yeah i could see how you know where they kind of stick out there a little bit on the inside of that i could i guess I could right see yeah that, but it's one of those things i never really noticed it myself um yeah. but then there was just there's been such a small few number of people that have and as soon as i heard there was a problem i wanted to address it immediately yeah so every time i get any kind of customer feedback i'm really taking that into account and trying to make sure that i make it better Do that. Um, just to make it how everybody else wants because so far it's how I want. And now I'm trying to make sure it fits everybody's needs. So <laughs> that's, what's cool about you though, man, is you've been so like, at least with me and, and I, as I've seen you interact with people, you know, you're, you're you listen to people, you hear their feedback. I, I, I appreciate that. I think that that's been very awesome. And anytime I've said something, you've been so quick to be like, well, tell me about it. You know, tell me what you think about it. Like, uh, just it's very cool that that, that you're that way. Uh, back to the accessories. Does what about like a pistol holder? Would how does that work with this? Yeah, I, so, I don't have that, but can you do that with these? Yeah. So we are actually uh, we worked with Vanandi holsters, and oh, Vanandi, if you haven't heard of them, they actually already make a holster that mounts to the back of bino harnesses or yeah, bino harnesses. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked with them because I saw their design, and I was like, oh, that'd be really cool to put on mine. 
And so we have it designed to where it actually mounts on the backside of the harness. And so the reason it goes on the backside of the harness rather than the pouch is because now you can remove your pouches and you still have your pistol right there, ready to go at all times. So if you're in Grizz country and say you get a kill, well, the first thing you typically do when you're on a kill is take off your buying harness, set it to the side. Right. Well, now when you do that, you still have your pistol right there, ready to go. So you're staying protected. Or if, or if you just want to go on a hike, you don't need to have a whole nother setup. It's, it's just take the pouches off and now you can go on a hike. So and you can go take a dump too cool, without taking, you know, cool we holster. always take our vinyl, our harness off when we, or our pouch off when we go, you know, go take a dump in the woods, you can take the pouch off and, and still have the harness with the gun. So it's, exactly. <laughs> it's just, it's always having it on you is kind of the key for that. Um, Cause awesome. the only way you're going to get that is if you're running an entire separate chest holster or if you leave your vinyl harness on at all times. Right. So this way you have it all in one. Dude, I'm headed to Alaska next year to hunt moose, which will be right in the thick of Grizz country. I'm going to have to make sure I get one of those holsters and and throw it on the back of this thing because that would be super beneficial to have. That's exciting. Absolutely. I say, and it's actually very, very comfortable. Um, I think that's one of the biggest concerns everybody has at first is that, oh, I'm putting a plastic holster directly up against my chest, but it, it really fits in there really nicely. Um, it's not very big. It's not bulky. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much just adding the width of your gun. That's and awesome. it, it just, it fits perfectly and feels nice. So it's not, it's not a bad thing at all. That's awesome. Well, kudos to you, man. I mean, I, I love this system. I, I, I have absolutely enjoyed using it um, on my hunt so far. Like I said, the only thing I've had it so far is for my Utah general archery hunt, but that's a month long hunt as well as some scouting prior to that. It's been on my chest, and I've, I've just absolutely enjoyed um, using it. I'm excited. I mean, it's, I'm headed out to go elk hunting on, well, tomorrow night I'm headed out to go elk hunting, and so it's going with me. It'll be on my chest again for the next two weeks as I'm hunting elk, and just I'm, I'm loving every every minute of it. So is there anything that we didn't touch on that you wanted to touch on regarding your, your system here? Um, you know, I, I think we covered it pretty well. Um, I mean, obviously, there's probably a lot more to it, really yeah. in depth as far as everything. But it uh, overall, that was, that was pretty much it. I think maybe the only other thing really would be the pockets and pocket material, uh-huh. um, because most other ones oh, out yeah. there that you're going to go and get, they're a fairly sturdy material. Mm-hmm. Where I opted for that at first, and then I went to, you know, for myself and talking to other guys, they really wanted something that's going to fit more gear down inside of there, yeah. in their pouches, easier to get in, easier to get out and holds bigger items. Yeah. So I opted for a stretchier material. Um, and that was a material that took me quite a long time to figure out because it needed to still hold up to, um, you know, pretty rough conditions. Mm -hmm. So it's a really sturdy material, but it has a lot of stretch to it. So you can really, really fit stuff in there easily and bigger items if you want. I say on one side, I had my, my windage powder and it didn't really stretch it out too much, but on the other side, I have the new, that new phone scope, uh, adapter and I shoved it in this side and actually really can't even, I mean, it's, it's, it's stretched. You, you can tell I stretched it a little bit, but for the most part, you really can't even tell that anything's been in there, but that's what I kept in this side. And then I kept my powder over, over here. I've taken it out cause I'm not archery hunting anymore, but, um, but yeah, that is nice. I'd actually didn't put anything in these front pouches at all during the, during the hunt, but I could see those being used for a lot of different things. Yeah, you might throw some like reeds in there. That's the reason we actually put the little flap over the top of it was oh. to keep dirt and debris getting down in there when you're belly crawling under a fence or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So <laughs> speaking of dirt. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, that's the cool thing about the material too, is that you take that phone scope out and that material will actually return to its form. It'll yeah. take a little bit of time, but it will actually return. So yeah, I was gonna say it's, it, it it's really, really is material. like you can see the, it like a little bit there, but hardly, hardly at all. I mean, it, it really is back to its its normal self there. And that's another thing that's cool about this is this thing cleans up really well. I just took a wet rag to this, and I, I don't know if that's the proper yeah. way to do it, but I just took like a wet rag, yeah. and I mean most of it was just dust. But when I did crawl under that that fence, like I got some dirt here on the front a little bit, but um, for the, it, it's cleaned up really really nicely so i don't so, know yeah, it, cl- they, it definitely cleans up nice and like you were saying too like if you sweat a lot or if it gets yeah. dirty maybe you're on your kill and get blood all over it you could take that harness off and just throw it in the washer you've never been able to do that with another vinyl oh, harness, yeah. but you could literally just take it off and throw it in the wash and get it cleaned up and then you'll be back to brand new again i probably ought to do that because so, back here nice 
on the loops. It's kind of like you can see the dirt's like kind of caked in there because it was all sweaty and and then I got it yeah. all dirty. But that's a good. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, just taking the pouches off and throwing it in the in the washer. Dude, yeah, this exactly. Yeah. System is so nice. That's <laughs> just extra extra features all the way around. Yeah, and that's where too like the. Uh, with the accessories, now that I kind of think about that, the uh, the phone pouch with the stretch pocket, mm-hmm. I actually designed that to fit a range finder in the front of that. Oh, and really? The reason for that, I, I don't know if you've seen any of my videos with that, but what I really like doing is I will actually take the phone pouch and instead of mounting it to the pouch or the bino harness pouch, I will mount it directly to the harness itself and then put the bino pouch over the top of it oh. because it has the molly webbing where yeah. it can fit like that. So reason that i think that's really cool and this is just personally how i hunt when i go to make a stock i like to go in super sleek lightweight mm-hmm. very minimalistic yep. so i'll drop even my binos and because i'm usually i'm going in with a bow and i'm going to get in real close so i'm not going to really need them um and what you can do then is you drop your binos drop your backpack you put your range finder tethered to the harness and then you put it in the front of the phone pouch so you have your phone on your chest and you have your range finder right there um, so you can go in super sleek that way, mark your location with your Onyx on your phone, mm-hmm. and then get in there and make a range on something and be ready to go. So you take this phone pouch and put it in here in between the two? Yeah, and just this, like on that. The, on this yep. Molly system here? Okay. Yep. That's a yeah. really good idea. It fits idea. in there pretty, like, pretty snug. Yeah. Um, it does stick out a little bit farther, but it's, I mean, it's the thickness of your phone. You know, it's not a lot. And if you're already running your phone in the back, back pouch or the back pocket on the pouch then it's pretty much the same thing anyways yeah i'll say that the only difference is that your phone's fully enclosed i'll say i threw my phone in here quite a bit this this pouch back here just kind of quick you know if i if i wasn't worried about like getting dusty or whatever i'd I'd put it in there but it was always in the pouch like when i was in the side by side and and crawling through the dirt but if i was just like glassing and you know texting or whatever then i just throw it in here in between just because it was it was super easy i think that's really the only thing i used that pocket for that time but that's a really good idea. Throwing it in between there, give it a little extra protection. But then, yeah. yeah, you can pull off your pouch system and then have your phone and your and your. I'll have to see if my rangefinder fits. So, in like that. one one thing you can do too, you can actually uh, just leave the zippers like halfway open, uh-huh. and then you can still grab it in and out just as if it was in the back pocket. And yeah. then, if it's a little hard to access, the other thing you can do because it's got the side buckles, you just undo the top two. And it kind of leans, just leans flat out. Uh-huh. And so you can access that even easier. Gotcha. So a lot of different ways to use it. It's kind of just a matter of playing with it and figuring it all out. And it's a new system to learn. It's like, there's really nothing else out there that can do all that stuff. So that's the thing. And I, I feel like every time I, like every day when I was out there, like I'd hunt in the mornings and then during the middle of the day, I really kind of just messed with this a lot. Just trying to make sure I had a good understanding of it. So we should have had this conversation before that hunt, though, because I didn't even think about some of this stuff, though, of, of using it for that. Because I'd love to actually see if my rangefinder, I've got a big rangefinder. I've got the uh, the Vortex, the 4000. So it's a pretty big rangefinder. Okay. But I think I think yeah. it'll fit in there because this stuff, that's another, and like, this stuff stretches, it stretches like. stretches out extremely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nuts yeah. how much it, this stuff it stretches. It should fit in there. I've got the uh, Maven RF1, and that's a big rangefinder. Oh, yeah. I can fit that in there. So. Oh, yeah. Or I'm I mean, gonna it do it. I'll send you a, a lot, picture. It, 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 yeah, it definitely fits in there, no problem. I mean, I haven't found one yet that doesn't, so Dang. I'll be curious to know if yours does or not. Now, okay. yeah, I'm gonna. Um, it's out in my truck. Otherwise, I'll just grab it right here and, and do it. But it's out in my truck. Um, but as soon as we're done, I'm gonna go grab it and see if it. I, I think it, I'm. I'm positive it will. As much as this thing stretches, and it's so crazy how it returns back to uh, how it's supposed to be or how it originally was. Like. Seriously, I, I guess I, I didn't really use the front ones a lot. It was mainly it was the side ones that I use. Like I said, I use the back one for my phone, but and I didn't use this one on the the phone holder at all. Or, no, I put my I had my tag in here is what I had. I put my my deer oh, tag yeah. in there is what I had in there. But that's crazy. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we should have this conversation before. I might have to add some some of yeah, this stuff just, to the video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just different ways to set it up. You know, it's stuff you haven't seen before, so yeah. you don't really think about it. So, man, I'm just amazed, yeah, dude, that, was, that you thought this stuff through. Like, I just, I it still blows my mind that you come up with this stuff. That's yeah. I mean, I've, I'm always sitting there designing stuff. I mean, I was doing this before I even came up with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I was working on other products, even that I not working on them, but designing stuff like yeah. i designed a bow site and 
like all this other stuff out there. And finally I was like, okay, this is the one I'm going to pull the trigger. I want to make this. So, so I, I have a request, uh, of of you this is way down the road something that you i want you to do way down the road but speaking of bow stuff you, you said bow sight but a, a soft shell bow case like i have not found a good one that like thinks about all the stuff that we need in a bow case that's durable like that really just just performs so 10 years down the road when you've when you've had fun with this and, and have moved on to whatever else you're going to move on Get the, uh, think about something like that because I man, there, there's just so oh, many yeah. things that can and should be done better. And vinyl harnesses were definitely one of them. But bow cases, I just I have not found a good soft shell bow case. No, oh, definitely. I mean, that's one thing when I look at a product too. I'm gonna look, you know, top to bottom, every mm-hmm. single little detail, and try not to pass anything up. So that's yeah. what I was doing with this. So I'm just gonna continue that. Really make sure it really fits every little bit of needs. So I don't mean to get too much in, you know, giving too many details out or, and whatnot, but uh, do you have something in the works in the in the future that you're you're working on that you can spill the beans on, or are we keeping that close to the chest? Um, so let's see. Uh, I, I've got one thing that I've kind of shared with a couple people. Um, I guess a couple products here. Um, uh, there'll be a, a zippered side pouch. It's just going to be a small little zippered side pouch, um, roughly the same size as the rangefinder pouch, and that'll just be you know if you want to throw your car keys in there. Um. You know, just some other gear, a headlamp maybe or something, a knife. You can throw that in there. Um, and then the front of it's going to have actually all Velcro. And then we're going to have little um, separate attachments for a reed holder and a bullet holder. Wow. And you can either run those in a pocket because they'll have a cover for the back of it. Or you can use the Velcro and attach it directly to the front of that pouch. Nice. Um, that's probably, that's that's coming out soon. Um, there be Sweet. There'll be some bigger stuff coming out at the very beginning of this year, um, at least releasing, I should say. Nice. So, ATA show 2025, January 8th. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have a new launch. So, so we're gonna release some pretty cool stuff there. Well, you'll have a booth there and and have it all there. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. It'll be all there and it'll be launching. We should have videos going for that. Nice. Um, that that'll be that'll be a really cool launch. I think that's gonna really start uh, set a new standard for stuff so oh, i'm man. excited for that that's that, pretty cool i can't awesome. say what though but that, that that's all right that's all right well and as i've looked at this system i'm like <laughs> there's there's so much i feel like that you can do with this system like even the back where you got all this molly webbing i'm like i can only imagine like what may be coming for that and like i've got like a camel pack that i can actually i can web in there but i you know i've just I was like, there's got to be more coming to this system there's so much to it that you know that isn't being utilized right now and i feel like it's built for something down the road and so i I figured there's something else coming but i do like that idea of having like a a smaller a smaller pouch like this that's a zipper pouch that yeah like keys and and whatnot that could you could put in there to to keep that stuff protected especially if you you know if i took this phone holder put it back here give me some room on this side to have something like that a little pouch that i could put that stuff in yeah, exactly. That's that's how I've been running it this year. So that's I'll awesome. say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, nice. <laughs> it, it's a pretty sweet setup running it that way. And yeah, I mean, I mean, the biggest thing is, you know, the more traction we get in the market and the more people start hearing about us and supporting us buying our product, mm-hmm. um, the more we're going to be able to come out with other things and yeah. continue down the road. And just there, there's a lot of designs I'm working on and I already have. So Nice. It's just a matter of moving forward and getting them done. I feel like you're growing quickly though. You know, as I've watched your page from, you know, I feel like since like the beginning, you guys, you, you well, you guys keep saying you guys, you popped up and, and, you know, when you very first kind of got started and, and I watched you for a little bit just to see what, what it was all about. And I mean, it, it immediately caught my eye and I'm sure that all of the people listening and watching this are like, holy cow, okay, this is something different, something that I need to, to be looking at. Um, but I feel like it's grown pretty quickly in, in a short amount of time, at least from my, my viewpoint. I don't know if it's probably not growing fast enough for you though. Yeah. It's probably never fast enough for me, but yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I hope, I hope it gets there. I mean, it's just a matter of time before things really take off. I feel like, and, yeah, I mean, that'll be pretty cool. It, it's already been a pretty crazy experience just getting it out there and watching guys wearing it around now and getting feedback on it. It's something I, I never would have even expected for myself. Like, mm-hmm having a hunting product in the industry and <laughs> selling it to guys and, you know, even having some big name guys using it. Like I don't, you see Josh Bomar, mm-hmm. he's, he's wearing my harness. I talked with him a little bit. He, he came over, he bought it. Super nice guy. Nice. And watching him wearing it now. And that's, that's 
it's pretty cool. It's yeah. like watching some of those big name guys out there. Yeah. So it's just cool to see. Uh, I, I think it's just the it's beginning. Kind of a surreal moment. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's just the beginning for you, man. I really think I really do. I think it's uh I think it's gonna blow up. It's gonna be a, a lot of fun. I'm and I'm impressed that you're able to do it, you know, as a as a one man show right now. Are you are you getting now and able to hunt it all while you're doing all this, or has this kind of shut down the hunting? Oh, yeah. I I'm just grinding away i mean it's work during the days and then work during the nights doing this stuff Mm -hmm. i'm constantly working so it's pretty (laughs) crazy but i did just go on a like 10 day elk hunt Uh, so that was pretty fun i've got typically i try to get out on the weekends get a little bit more hunting done i've got an antelope tag um yeah i mean i'm gonna try and get out as much as i can so definitely the biggest thing too is i have some guys testing some gear but i also um i'm pretty ocd about stuff Mm -hmm. so i want to get out there and test it myself especially and so that's where i'm trying to get out there as much as i can and really make sure that it works in the hunting scenarios Mm -hmm. and it's not just you know wearing it around the house or wearing it outside on my property or whatever i want to make sure it actually works in the environment and holds up to my standards yeah so well that was my thought on it too when i first you know reached out to you was like yeah i mean i i could say i could see how this works really well but is it really going to hold up? Like, I, you know, I am not easy on gear and it, none of us really are. We're, we're pretty hard on gear. It's, it's just the nature of hunting. You know, you're in hard places. Like I, I crawled through little rocky areas, crawled under fences. You know, I, I did a lot of stuff like that. And, and I was like, let's just see if this is really going to hold up like these magnetic buckles and, and stuff like that. Is it really going to do the job? And I mean, it, it, did the job perfectly so I, I i'm with you man it's good to get out there and really test this stuff and before you you put it out there and just make sure it, it works but I'm, I'm glad you're getting out and, and doing some hunting dude so i went to montana for the first time in my life two weeks ago i've never been to montana until two weeks ago and oh, nice. um i was there for work which it, that's that part sucked but no i mean the work the work's great but i wanted to be out hunting so bad like just i I flew into billings and then we drove from billings to bozeman and up up to helena and dude that was some of the most beautiful country i've ever seen in my life oh yeah (sighs) it's nice up there i mean especially from where you came from and where you drove to i mean you see a pretty wide range Mm -hmm. of montana there you see the eastern side where it's pretty flat and then you came into the mountains. Yeah. So you, you got a pretty good view of everything. So dude, it made me Montana's wanna, got a little bit of everything to offer. It made me want to go elk hunting so bad. Like as, as we were driving that drive from Billings to Bozeman, yeah, um, like it started out kind of just, yeah, like flat, not really that great. But as we got into the mountains, like freak, dude, I got to get into these mountains. I got to start hunting some elk here. Like, uh, I don't know what it's going to take, but this is like perfect elk hunting country. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's hard to drive around out there and not want to do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. I'm, I'm glad that you're getting out there and, and doing that. And you said that, you know, before we hit record that you were putting kids to bed and, and whatnot. So I can only imagine the, the life that you're living right now. I'm sure it's uh sure it's busy and oh, it's, it's a little bit of chaos. I've got two under two. Well, Oof. actually my, my Oof. oldest just turned two, so oh. they're getting older now, but <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite a journey with everything. Man. I guess I just decided to do everything at once. Hey, I'll bet you're not lacking for things to do, man. I'll bet you're, you're keeping yourself pretty busy. You can't get in any trouble at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm pretty well booked up completely. It's, it's nonstop. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine, dude. Oh, that's, that's crazy. I, I've, so I've got four of them, um, but they're older. My youngest is, is four. So I've got four, seven, 10 and, and 13. So they're, they pretty much do their own thing at, at this point, put themselves to bed and, and whatnot. But, oh man, it's, it's crazy. It's busy, but dude, it's the great, it's the greatest time of life. I think we're in the perfect, like best time of life right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I say that that's just, it's great raising kids and everything. I mean, it's so much fun and experiencing stuff through their eyes again and everything. It's just awesome. It's, it's cool to see it. And I just can't wait for them to get older and being able to take them out hunting and teach them all the things I know. So it's a pretty cool experience. It's what it's about. Like even like tonight going out with my son and, uh, you know, what, and helping him just, you know, he's, he's 13. So he's, he's passed his hunter education a couple of years ago. And I did take him to Colorado last year on a deer hunt never saw anything that he uh he could shoot but you know just being out there today and just making sure the gun was sighted in and having those kind of conversations with him like it was just it was fun it's just it's it's a good time of life and uh, it's, it's exciting so yeah enjoy the enjoy the two-year-olds yeah, but look awesome. forward to the the 12 and 13 year olds 
Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you got to enjoy every little bit of it as it That's goes. Right. So. That's right. Well, shoot, Evan, we'll I'll let you I'll let you back to the family and let you back to your your evening. But I just I want to first of all, you know, thank you for this. This is this has been absolutely awesome. I, I it's it's just perfect. It honestly is. I, I've never had a, a harness system like this. I've never had one that's as comfortable as this. I mean, I, you just hit it on all cylinders. So so kudos to you. Great job, man. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Yeah. And for all those listening, um, I'll put links down below so that you guys know where to go, where to go find this stuff so that you can uh, get your own. But honestly, whether you're in the market for a, a new harness system or, or not, I mean, give this a, a try. I think you'll absolutely love it. And uh, I don't think you go back to whatever you're using, regardless of what you're using. So, uh, hey, Evan, where is the best place for people? To, I, I was going to put a link to your website, but where's the best pay, place for people to get in contact with you? Yeah, you know, my website, that's, uh, we got a contact page on there if they need to reach out directly. Uh, okay. Have a ton of information on the website. Also, check out our Instagram and Facebook. Uh, that's going to be a lot of uploading videos where we're constantly posting stuff and um, giving little pointers here and there about our gear and kind of check it out on there too. Or reach out to me directly on there. Uh, I'm pretty much on everything and always, always checking out. So, okay, wherever you need to reach out. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks, man, again, for, for being willing to come on the, the podcast and, and chat with me about this. Excited to see where you go with this this whole thing. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun watching you grow and watching your company become what, uh, what it's going to become. But if we can help in any way, let us know. Uh, we're, we're here to help out and, and support you in any way that we can. Because, again, I've, I love it. I love what you're doing and love everything about this, this product. So appreciate you, man. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Man. Okay. All right, man. I'll let you back to your evening. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. All right, see you, buddy.